this video I'll show how I upgraded my cheap 3D printed CNC mill to a much more capable machine that can reliably cut metal parts. The first version of my CNC had a ton of flexibility and vibration which caused chatter on parts, a ton of noise, and made it generally unpleasant to use and not much good for machining aluminum. In this video I'm going to make some major improvements that address those problems. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison in CAD of the original design and the improved one. I've added a new spindle, thicker rails for the x-axis, a whole new metal assembly for the z-axis, thicker 3D printed frame brackets, and one of the most important changes is that every axis now has two nuts on the lead screws that almost entirely eliminate backlash. Here's a view of the new printed parts, and here's all the metal parts that go into the new z-head and x-axis. I wanted to make all the metal parts on the original CNC, but it just wasn't up to the task of cutting aluminum, so I built the parts almost entirely out of pieces cut on a bandsaw and drilled with 3D printed locator jigs. The only exception to this was the channel in this plate here and the big cutout on this one, which I did use a larger mill to cut. I also used a mill to clean up some edges, but that was mostly cosmetic and wasn't required for functionality. So let's take a look at the construction of the head. Four aluminum plates are cut from a single three and a half by half inch aluminum bar. Once I sawed them and cleaned up the edges with a mill, most of the work involved just drilling and tapping since all the smaller pieces would screw into these. The parts aren't beautiful, but the goal here is just to have something that works with minimal machining. These are linear bearings and housing blocks that will ride on a 16mm diameter rail for the x-axis. I'll saw these 1 inch bars into blocks that'll be drilled and tapped to mount lead screw nuts to move the head on the x-axis. I threaded the lead screw in to check for fit and alignment. If there's any error, I'll want to correct it now before the head is mounted on the gantry. I made a similar lead screw nut block for the Z axis, but because of the narrow space between the head plate and the Z carriage, I had to shave down the nut. For the new spindle I used one of those ubiquitous 500 watt Chinese motor kits, but it actually seemed to be pretty well balanced after I removed the fan. Next I started taking the old parts off the original CNC. Then I started building back up. The first thing I added to the frame was some additional corner brackets to the base to increase rigidity. I also increased the width of the base from 370 to 420 millimeters, which will allow me to cover the entire width of my build plate. Then I made much larger brackets for the vertical columns on the gantry. Here's the old and new brackets side by side. The left side gantry bracket looks kind of like Swiss cheese. These holes will make it easy for me to mount extra accessories later if I decide to. 
Now I'll start assembling the gantry itself, starting with these corner blocks. The electronics box and the spindle power supply will both be mounted on the back side of the gantry. This way the machine will take up much less space on the table than the original design, even though I've increased the width of the frame. It's really important to pay attention to the manufacturer's warnings. Looking good so far, now I can mount the x-axis rails and head on the gantry. The top side was mostly done at this point, so I moved down to installing the new lead screw carriage on my y-axis. Now would probably be a good time to explain why I'm using two nuts on all my lead screws. Let's take a closer look at your typical lead screw, like you'd see on a 3D printer or a CNC. You typically have this brass nut that rides along some square cut threads on a steel screw. If we look really close though, we'll see that there's actually a decent amount of give between the nut and the threads that allows the nut to wiggle back and forth somewhat even when the screw is locked in place. If I wiggle this nut, it'll probably move around about half a millimeter or so along the axis of the screw, and when you're dealing in tenths or hundredths of a millimeter with a CNC, that's obviously not acceptable. The solution to this problem is to add a second nut on the lead screw and tighten both nuts together with a set of screws. This places tension on the threads of the lead screw at the expense of additional friction. However, I found that with a little gear grease, the screw will be perfectly happy. If I wanted to be really fancy, an even better option is to use a ball screw which actually has round cut threads and bearing balls between the nut and the screw. This makes for a very smooth running screw with practically zero backlash. Unfortunately, I'm not made of money so I won't be using a ball screw for this build. Anyway, back to the build. After threading on the new y-axis carriage and screwing it in, I was finished with mechanical parts so it was time to take care of electronics. When I cracked open the electronics box, I found it was totally caked in sawdust. Being mounted above and behind the spindle and sealed up better should help avoid this issue with the new electronics box because if these were conductive aluminum chips, they'd have totally shorted out everything. I had to reprint one of the x-axis rail brackets at the last minute and the only color I had was light blue. I also added a vise to the build plate, which is a must for machining smaller parts. 
I started using FreeCAD to create the tool paths for machining parts, which works really well for two and a half dimensional jobs and will even do 3D milling, although I have yet to try that. I don't think it's nearly as powerful as something like Fusion 360, but it's very intuitive and easy to use and I've gotten very good results with it. Plus it's free. I really like that it can simulate the tool path in the software and show you how material is going to be cut away. This helps make sure the part will come out the way I want it and it's also just fun to watch. To test the upgrades, I'll be cutting out this turbine wheel and a housing for it out of solid aluminum. In a future video, these parts will become a steam turbine. The burrs from the holding tabs need to be cut off and there's still a bit of chatter noticeable on the side faces, but I'm extremely happy with this for a first run. Next I'll mill out an o-ring groove and a cavity in this one inch block to form a turbine housing. This project was a total success, and I now have the capability to build some more advanced projects that 3D printing isn't capable of. Thanks for watching.